In this video we're going to look at uh, a method for finding the roots of unity, i.e. solutions to an equation of the form z to the n equals 1. In this case we'll look at z to the 6 equals 1 as our example. The first method we're going to look at involves using our graphics calculator to determine the roots. To find the roots of unity using the Casio graphics calculator, we'll use the polynomial solver within the equation menu. So we go in here, we're looking to solve the equation of degree 6 uh, with coefficients of 1 for um, x to the power of 6, 0 for the rest up to the constant, which has a value of minus 1. Now putting this in a calculator and solving, we'll see in this case we only get two solutions, the two real solutions. This is because our calculator is in real mode. So what we actually need to do is actually go in and make sure our calculator is in a complex mode or Cartesian mode. So we go into menu, uh, let's go back into our, our run matrix menu, shift setup, and we go down to the complex mode and change that into Cartesian form. So then if we go back into the uh, polynomial solver and so go back into our polynomial solver, solving the equation now, we'll see that we now have six equations or six solutions, I should say. And if we highlight a particular solution, we'll be given the value in exact form. Okay, so the other form that we may wish to to see our solutions in is in polar form. So to do that, again, we go back into our um, run matrix form, click on our setup, and change our complex mode into polar form. And then if we go back into our uh, polynomial solver, we go through there, F2, number of and clicking on solve, we'll see that our solutions are now in polar form. Uh, and if we scroll down there, we'll see the exact value of the angle given for our, our common angles there. The second method for determining the roots of unity involves converting our value on the right hand side into polar form and then using De Moivre's theorem to work out all our solutions. So we represent 1 as cis 0 plus k lots 2 pi. Now the reason why we put k lots 2 pi in there is we're after multiple solutions and we're looking at setting k between 0 and 5 because we're expecting six distinct solutions. So the first next step we do is to uh, take the sixth root on both sides. Having done that we can now apply De Moivre's theorem and that simplifies to cis k lots of 2 pi over 3. And again remember we're setting k between 0 and 5. Now if we enumerate all those six solutions we get cis 0, cis pi on 3, um, etc. up to cis 5 pi on 3. The next step then involves simplifying those solutions where, where possible and also making sure that our solutions are written with an argument between uh, minus pi and pi. So we notice here that cis two, 4 pi on 3 becomes cis negative 2 pi on 3. Okay and again we're doing this because we want our argument of z to be between minus pi and pi. Now if we let z, uh, w equal cis pi on 3, then we can write our solutions in terms of w. Uh, we always represent w as the solution with the smallest positive argument. So in this case the smallest positive argument is pi on 3. Now if we then look at w squared, this is equal to cis pi on 3 squared, which when we simplify becomes cis 2 pi on 3. w cubed becomes cis pi w to the power of 4 becomes cis 4 pi on 3, which simplifies um, to cis minus 2 pi on 3. And then finally, w to the power of 5 becomes cis 5 pi on 3, which simplifies to cis minus pi on 3. So the roots of z to the 6 equals 1 are the solutions 1, w, w squared, w cubed, w to the power of 4, and w to the power of 5, where w is cis pi on 3. We'll also look at the property in a moment that 1 plus w plus w squared, etc. up to w to the power of 5 equals 0. We'll now look at how this works within, or demo how this works within GeoGebra. We'll now use GeoGebra to demonstrate how this looks geometrically. So we begin by uh, plotting the initial point uh, z equals 1. 
And then we'll plot the, the second point, Z1, which is cis pi over 3. And then we plot the remaining four points. So noting that, that the second uh, Z2 is just Z1 squared, Z3 is Z, Z1 cubed, etc. You'll see our six points plotted as, as so. Now, if we draw a, a circle of radius 1, we'll notice that each of those points lies on that, that circle. We can then look at drawing our vectors from the origin out to each point, which are labelled here as U, V, W, A, B and D. Measuring the angle between each of those vectors, we see that there's a constant angle of 60 degrees between each, each vector, and in fact each point on the unit circle. So it's clear to see that our points are equally spaced around the circle and one unit from the origin. Now if we look at adding the, the six vectors together, so u plus v plus w plus a plus b plus d, we'll notice here that the resultant is the zero vector. So in other words, that sort of confirms that property that we uh, had at the end of the, the last part of the video. And finally, we can draw a pentagon around using the, the six points, six vertices, and we notice we get a regular pentagon uh, with each, each of its edges of the same size. Uh, in this case, we can see here each of one unit. We end this video by providing an algebraic proof that 1 plus w plus w squared up to w to the power of 5 equals 0. So we begin by observing that if w is a root of z to the 6 equals 1, then w to the power of 6 take 1 must equal 0. If we divide w to the 6 take 1 by w take 1, where w is not equal to 1, uh, using our synthetic division, we'll note here that w take 1 is a factor, and the quotient in this case is w to the power of 5 plus w to the power of 4, etc. plus 1. Now because w to the power of 6 take 1 is 0 and w is not equal to 1, this must imply that the quotient w to the power of 5 plus w to the power of 4, etc. must equal 0, hence proving our property algebraically.